the very first lecture I talked about why we need to do statistical mechanics. It is a difficult subject, very difficult subject and um, in, the, in the evolution of statistical mechanics, uh, physicists and chemists almost you know they were hand in hand, many many things were done together. Um, Willard Gibbs many times is one of the father was considered to be a chemist uh, when I was doing PhD. He was referred to as a uh, American chemist. Uh, now I think he is claiming uh, as much as uh, so. Very first lecture that we did, we did the preliminaries. These uh, the, the we, did, we talked about how if you take a uh, undergraduate physical chemistry or even MSc level physical chemistry book, what you will find is that the chapters except the uh, uh, the wave mechanics, uh, one or two chapters, and spectroscopy. If there are 32 chapters, you will find 20, 25 chapters are things like kinetic theory of gases, thermodynamics, entire four, three, four chapters of thermodynamics, then you have a phase equilibrium, then you have a phase transition, then you have binary mixture, you have solution, electrochemistry. All these chapters that you study, they are all. And you know remember that when you study of uh, conductivity of the ions, lithium, sodium, potassium, then you plot it against the size. They are supposed to go as 1 over si size of the ion, crystallographic <laughs> radius, but it just goes, uh, instead of going like that straight line, it just goes the maximum and falls back. That if you remember that was called uh, conductivity times viscosity is called Falden product. And that non-monotonic behavior was called breakdown of the Falden product. The reason I am talking of the breakdown of the Falden product is that because I want to make a point and a very important point which is the following. So, I, this is limiting ionic conductivity in electrochemistry you have read D by Huckel remember and viscous and 1 over R sorry 1 over R ion. Since I am this is nothing but the what is called the diffusion. And diffusion is inversely proportional to viscosity. So, this product should vary as 1 over R ion, which is like this. Instead of that, what happens that it just comes down like that, and this lithium, then sodium, then potassium, it goes like that. And this is here where cesium, rubidium, and all these guys are. Maybe the potassium will be closer to that. Now, so in the Undergraduate textbook of Castellan or Moore or Glassstone or all other Atkins, they call this breakdown of Haldane's product and give to some pictorial description like iceberg formation around the small ions. Uh, so, basic idea of my telling this is that in much of physical chemistry in undergraduate, whenever we have anything interesting going on, we have a picture that came, but that picture was mostly very approximate. However, behind all these pictures, there is a quantitative theory that was largely developed in the post uh, 1950 and or maybe 1960s, 70s and aided enormously by the computer simulations. So, statistical mechanics has come of age now. And like in quantum chemistry, you have all the packages. So, a student working in a quantum chemistry laboratory, uh, they can always have these packages and they use these packages, for example, doing organic chemistry calculations and other things. Statistical mechanics, those kind of packages are just coming now in terms of Grumax or, or Amber or the different force fields that are come. So, it has become much more institutionalized now. So, there are a lot more calculations going on. And it has played a very important interesting thing that it has gone, it has gone uh, again uh, ok. It is it, it, a rapidly developing field huge amount of um, it is not that much visible still in India though there are now significant number of people doing stat mac in chemistry. Physics always is a huge, huge in physics. So, this was the preliminaries that I explained uh, that why that uh, you need to invoke statistical mechanics to understand the what we call the large scale phenomena. Large scale phenomena many particles like phase transitions like this conductivity 
or understanding thermodynamics or uh, so phase equilibrium, phase transition all these things. We, we discussed that in the first lecture. Second lecture we had little bit of mathematics where we did probability and statistics. And uh, because this name is statistical mechanics uh, which combines mechanics, mechanics is a very deterministic. It starts with Newton's equation and you know the, so everything is initial conditions given you can predict the, the future. But uh, uh, as I told you that the uh, unfortunately that the, we cannot even solve what is called a three body problem. Even if you have three particles we cannot solve that analytically. Uh, uh, even two particle having a little in a, a complicated potential not even complete radial potential say Leonard Jones potential even that has to be done through a quadrature. Uh, so the I uh, the whole uh, A of uh, so this is a interaction between A and B R A B this is the Leonard Jones potential we call it 612 potential the form is this is a universal notation sigma r by uh, uh, 12 minus sigma r by 6. Yeah, I let me say a and b are the same two particles both are a then I do not need the b I, I can do without this index. There is a separation between them that is r. And this is the form it very important to understand these things the interaction potential between two particles. When they come from a distance they attract each other but when they come too close electrons overlap and there is a huge repulsion. This simple potential apparently simple potential plays a very important role in the understanding of many many phenomena uh, solvation, phase transition many things. However, coming back to the point I am making even this potential in a two body we have to do by quadrature and by the time I go to three body potential if I bring one more I cannot solve the Newton's equation anymore ok. But however, when you think of the properties of water then you think of properties of water in a glass which has Avogadro number of molecules and they are strongly interacting and we cannot use Newton's equation anymore to solve them. If we want some really very complicated and sophisticated effect like uh, polarization that one molecule is polarizing another molecule then we have to do quantum mechanics that is even more difficult ok. So, we are faced with then a situation where we have to explain natural phenomena like why ice melts and then why steam uh, um, 100 degree centigrade becomes steam why I put a solute there then depression of freezing point and elevation of boiling point that you have learned in school. And these kind of things if you want to understand you cannot un uh, from first principles and what do I mean by first principle this is a term we use again and again in statistical mechanics you also use quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics when you see first principles we think that we are starting from Schrodinger equation and interaction potential uh, and going about it of course they, uh, they are lo looking at the electronic properties. And uh, there are there are there, there are uh, approximations and there are uh, answers in statistical mechanics. Why one can do quantum statistical mechanics? Right now, let me focus on classical statistical mechanics. That because the large amplitude, large scale phenomena like phase transition, or as I'm saying, why steam bites you more than water at the same temperature depression of uh, a freezing point like you add salt that is what the principle of ice cream that you get uh, you can go to minus 20 degree centigrade that is where ice cream forms. Uh, you can do that experiment uh, doing that. Now, uh, the, you can ice cream ice cream maker and there is a liquid there which is can goes very low temperature and you put water and you can make the ice cream no not water milk and water. Now, so these uh, many many large amplitude phenomena that we want to understand we cannot do by following Newton's equation anymore. So, then we need the, uh, but how do we go? So, Newton's mechanics classical mechanics means Newton's equations or Hamilton's equation or whatever let us continue with Newton's equation which we know. 
Newton's equation then is does not is not going to help us because we cannot even solve a three body problem. That is where the statistical mechanics comes in. It was formulated starting with Maxwell, Boltzmann, then Willard Gibbs. Now, so what is then I do? I cannot do mechanics as I know it. So, I have to do that. There, this was a huge, huge um, uh, conceptual and philosophical problem in the 19, the end of 19th century when uh, people started introducing the concepts of statistics and the what it all started with the work of Maxwell, you know Maxwell, all, all of you know the Maxwell velocity distribution. Maxwell is the first guy who told, okay, if I have in a glass jar a, uh, a, a bunch of atoms and molecules at a temperature T, I do not need to follow at a, a, a each of their each properties of each atom or molecule. Instead, I can talk in terms of a distribution. So, Maxwell said, okay, what are the, and Boltzmann also, what are the properties we want to know? I want to know the viscosity of the gas and later viscosity of the liquid. I need to know the pressure, equation of state, you know, how is the PV equal to NRT is the ideal gas. But when you go to little high density, ideal gas law breaks down and then comes the virial equation, okay. How do I get then virial coefficients? So, and uh, uh, so then Maxwell said, I do not need to know individual atoms and molecules in a departure, striking departure from uh, classical mechanics. Instead, I will talk of a probability distribution. As soon as the concept of probability distribution came in, then came the question of statistics. How do I define probability? I need statistics to define probability, okay. So, that is what it was the second lecture and which we discussed probability and statistics. Then the last lecture, third lecture, we, we started talking the postulates. So, fundamental concepts and postulates, I will revise a little bit of that, but then I will not do Liouville theorem in this lecture, I will do it later. I will go to directly to something which is little bit more application, ensembles and partition functions. And what these are from my book. And what I uh, written there that actually earlier I have this from postulates to formulation. So, we will go to the formulation of statistical mechanics today. So, it is a very important class in that sense, this and next class. And uh, what I had before the title is that from promises to realization, because there was this promise that was made by Boltzmann and Willard Gibbs, well, Willard Gibbs mostly realized it. So, the postulates, both Boltzmann and Willard Gibbs uh, uh, played a role in get, giving us the main postulates of statistical mechanics. From there, we will directly go now because this is more to do with dynamics and we will do that uh, at some stage, but not now. So, the postulates, there are two postulates what are uh, connected by the one, one hypothesis and based on that, statistical mechanics promises to explain the natural phenomena, which is a very high A. So, first postulate, so there are postulates that I did last, but this is so important, it is no harm done doing it once more. So, first postulate is called uh, time average and equal to ensemble average. And second postulate is called equally probably probability. And what is not told in a, not any book is that why we need the hypothesis and these two are connected by ergodic hypothesis. I will spend five. Uh, uh, next 5 minutes talking about it, then we will go to the starting the uh, uh, partition function and ensembles. How did that come? It came because uh, Boltzmann tried very, very hard to develop a kinetic theory of gases. 
So, you when you read the uh, I mentioned this last time also you know like in Schrodinger equation in, in a quantum mechanics if you no, noticed I did not notice, but I realized later you know, partly because of a book I picked up in one and a half rupee in presidency college uh, um, uh, the old books next to presidency college uh, uh, that fence uh, that when you study quantum mechanics is all the way from hydrogen molecule you do not have any name you know there is no name uh, because particle in a box rigid rotator harmonic oscillator hydrogen atom hydrogen molecule that because everything was done by Schrodinger alone you know when you first uh, 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 hit upon the idea he went uh, to a resort area and stayed 3 months there and solved everything. So, the whole quantum mechanics as you read in MSc you know is just done by one man. Similarly, kinetic theory of gases again there is no name almost entirely of the kinetic theory of gases was done by uh, Maxwell and a bit here and there by Boltzmann later. So, when this beautiful paper of Maxwell appeared there are other papers around that but not as clear as Maxwell and also not meant to be English speaking world. Then Boltzmann fell completely in love with that paper until the end of his life he died early 1906 he carried that paper and then he tried to extend the Maxwell's uh, Maxwell had this funny mix of assumptions that particles are like billiard ball but then on the other hand he does not he is also talking of an ideal gas ideal gas do not interact they pass through each other. So, there was the these contradictions in my, uh, all the ideal gas in our study of kinetic theory of gases. So, Boltzmann set out to extend it uh, to real gases and separate and there is a famous equation on Boltzmann kinetic equation, but Boltzmann did not fully succeed he tried very hard he could go only to very dilute gas and he also made some assumptions which were heavily criticized to the extent that probably caused his death. Now, when Boltzmann tried very hard and could not take into account even with the he is the first one uh, Maxwell had it the power distribution concept of probability, but he did not explicitly stated that in his formulation and that was done by Boltzmann he explicitly added probabilistic concepts. He said ok if I have a probability of a particle at a position r with momentum p I call it f r p t another particle at position r 1 I say this r 1 p 1 this r 2 p 2 then I have then the together I have a two particle distribution like I call up f 1 f 2 subscript to r 1 p 1 r 2 p 2 t that a given time a particle has R1 and P1 and other particles R2 P2 that is a two particle distribution but it is so difficult because it has R1 and R2 all are three dimension 336 and P1 and P2 another 336 what a beast it is. So, he made an approximation that F2 R1 P1 T2 uh, this was called is random random chaos approximation and that he was immediately and hugely criticized for making this approximation, but he had a no other option. Ne, uh, once uh, uh, subsequent whole century people have tried to 100 years people have tried to extend that and have done to some extent. So, when Boltzmann tried this he could extend only little on the other side of Atlantic one person who looked with concern at the difficulty faced by Boltzmann who was equal fan of Maxwell and Maxwell distribution his name is Willard Gibbs. Willard Gibbs then thought ok what Boltzmann did is not tenable anymore we cannot go that way because we cannot do two particle three particles out of question and there are many other complexity. So, then 
Willard Gibbs make the important observation that the, as I told last class also that let me have 10 glasses, 10 glasses of water half full. Now, now if I look into by that time uh, the uh, uh, microscopic motions and all these things were somewhat kinetic theory of gases was, uh, was, was already understood. So, if this 10 glasses all of the glasses if I think of the microscopic state and a microscopic state now is de de uh, defined by if, uh, giving the position and momentum of each particle. So, I have n particles then I give you R1, R2, Rn, I give you P1, P2, Pn that together determines my microscopic state of the system. Now, my 10 glasses all these have water. Now, all of these uh, microscopic all of them have the same properties. They have the they are in same temperature, they have the uh, let me call the same volume, they have the same pressure, they have the same specific heat, they have the same conductivity, a, a, a same entropy, every property is the same. But certainly the microscopic state of all of them would be different because there is such a huge number of microscopic states, atoms and molecules are moving around. So, then Willard Gibbs realized that if I can now have a mental replica, I have just one, this is my system in cost, this is my real system. Now, I mentally construct billions and billions of my mental replica such that they are thermodynamically same, but their microscopic states are different. So, their mental construction, this mental construction is called ensemble. Then he said, okay, my over, if I wait for a long time, then my D system, my system in question going to go through all the microscopic states, which are essentially same microscopic states which are these particles are, these systems are. So, now if I now in my mental replica, I create a mental uh, billions and billions of copies of these things which I call ensemble, the collection is called ensemble. If I can take average of that, then that would be same if I now study what Boltzmann tried to do, study the detailed trajectories. Trajectory means the path that a particle takes, all the particles take together, that will be the same. That means, if I can do a time averaging over infinite time with Boltzmann tried and if I can replace by the ensemble averaging, averaging over all this my mental, I will be little bit more uh, exact uh, because sometimes words do not, language do not carry the uh, difficult, but uh, so now they, so that was the first assumption of uh, first postulate of statistical mechanics that time average equal to ensemble average. Now, as soon as Gibbs did that, there is a problem came problem came that when I am doing time averaging, yeah, I have one system which I am studying for a very long time and I am studying the motion of atoms and molecules, their positions and momenta and then I am averaging a property, for example, pressure, I am averaging a property, for example, the internal energy, their enthalpy, entropy. But now, I have a replaced by the my mental construction, but what is the guarantee that my mental construction, my, my, what is the guarantee? that the system I am following for infinite time will go through all the microscopic states. And second, even if they go through all the microscopic states, what is the, uh, what, how do I, how do I give a probability to it? So, that is the time the, you know, he introduced that I am going to talk of the systems with a constant number n, constant volume v and constant energy e. So, all my mental replica have a constant energy e. So, the, all the microscopic states have the same energy e. If all the microscopic states have the same energy e, then I can now assume and I have no other option but to assume under this ensemble that there is equal probability, all the microscopic states are equally probable. There is no other option than to do that. It turned out it is correct, it worked out, but that means all the 
subsequent work said that is okay. All the microscopic states with equal energy are equal. We will still work on this. So, so these are the two first postulates. First postulate was introduced the ensemble the brain one of the most brilliant idea that mankind has ever come up with. It is probably does not get the sufficient credit that how brilliant this construction is the ensemble and then time average equal to ensemble average. But as soon as this was made he had to average over all the microscopic states and he needed a probability of being in a microscopic state. But since they are all the same energy the natural postulate was that they all are equal probably that is equally probability. But there are no, no other option but it turned out to be okay. Now came what was in, in between started talking about that now came the problem following or then gives face the following problem okay. I have done time average to ensemble average and I have said equal probability but what is the so in ensemble average I am going to billions and billions of microscopic states. But what is the guarantee that when I do a time averaging the system goes through all the microscopic states in a given time capital T say. What is that guarantee? Then comes introduce the constraint of the hypothesis which is called ergodic hypothesis which means the system indeed given sufficient amount of time it visits every microscopic state equal likely. So, first postulate required the second postulate because to average or ensemble and once this is set in but then I have to make sure that my system visits every state. So, this is then the made the ergodic hypothesis which connects these two hypotheses, the, these two postulates. So, this is the very important point of the statistical mechanics and why it is important because armed with these two postulates and one hypothesis that is where everything whole of statistical mechanics is built on. This is amazing you know it, this is what you can say equivalent to uh, there is no equation, equations will come later. It is the equivalent to uh, you are saying that okay, this is a wave function and the wave function has to have these properties, satisfy Schrodinger equation, psi square has to be positive and square integrable. The similar kind of things that comes here in this in this uh, the statistical mechanical formulation. This is very, very important to understand this part, it is more important now to understand than before because when we do now as I talking you uh, uh, a while ago about the different packages, time average is the what we call now the mo molecular dynamic simulation. And this is ensemble average what is called Monte Carlo. So, these are the two major branches of computer simulations that we do. And the same problem envisaged by Gibbs so many years ago, more than 100 years ago is exactly the problem we face now. So, when I do equilibrium statistical mechanics, equilibrium properties like phase transition, I land up the problem by one phase to other phase that cannot be done in molecular dynamic simulation because it cannot explore all these states. It gets stuck in a minima. We will talk about it. Now, that is where you go to Monte Carlo which is much better to do time independent equilibrium properties. Now, uh, Shubhasi was asking me today why we do mix these two. The reason we mix the two is that many times molecular dynamics get stuck. So, we follow a hybrid where you start with a multiple not too many maybe 10 or 20 initial condition then do molecular dynamics on that. And then probability of initial state given by the energy. So, the hybrid simulation is a very popular thing now to study really like really really complex problems like in biology or like in uh, like in uh, water in a supercooled uh, in a very low temperature. There are lot of interest now in water in low temperature because there is some presumably liquid liquid transition and people have gone banana over that. Okay. So, 
Uh, but now I will slightly talk if I have ok. Now this is the kind of thing that I uh, want to point out say I have a particle which is undergoing some kind of a, so this is a particle but I have a, 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 a kind of a landscape a energy like this. In that case the particle can get stuck here, this is a very simple thing a one dimensional walk random walk but in ordinary random walk drunkards random walk you do not have the you have a flat energy but you have a call we call rugged energy landscape. Such a simple problem one dimensional with energy distribution it just help to get a, uh, a molecular dynamic simulation going into uh, this kind of a system because it becomes non ergodic very quickly. And uh, so if you want to calculate equilibrium properties you do a Monte Carlo you just sample that is very easy to do. On the other hand if you want to do dynamical properties it becomes very very difficult. So, this is an example what we call compromised ergodicity. So, the ergodic hypothesis was particularly made to make sure these kind of situations are not done. Now, why it does not uh, is less serious many of the cases in NVE because all of them are same energy like this will be ruled out by in the, if I can do the simulation NV because these kind of things are not allowed. However, in real system we do not do NV, we do the other ensemble which I am now going to going to discuss.